I just realised that this is going to be the beginning of the video, so as long, even though there's no one on here, yeah, I don't think. Hello guys, welcome back, it's a live video! <laughs> um, today we're going to be talking about the menstrual cycle and PMS and how I dealt with cravings and that, but we're also going to react to um, a video by Jane Smith about the menstrual cycle. Hi guys! Hello, uh, oh thanks, fab hair, Ashley did this hair for me, I, I went to meet her, and then I saw she had this hairstyle, and I was like, Ashley, I love it, it's like a proper holiday hair, isn't it? And um, yeah, she was like, I'll do it for you, so yeah, she she did it for me, it's actually really quick, do you like it, do you like it? I just realised, oh, I don't think that looks, that's probably better, um, so yeah, do you like it guys, hello, hello Jasmine's Journey, the shrinking, the shrinking, the shrinking violet, Monique, uh, Kaylee, Shatara, Little Mai, Valentina, Palunrian, I'm sorry I can't say that, <laughs> Kalandra, Kalandra, Kalandra Williams, P, Hello Cherish, Woo Woo, S, H, P, Christine, Christine, oh, you know what, Christine, Christine, I was going to say Christine, sorry, um, I'm trying to sit like a little bit, I'm sitting a little bit further away from this so the screen um hi guys what time is it there so here it is 9 15 right and i'm not going to do like a two hour long stream again <laughs> because obviously i've got to get up in the morning for the kids as well um and it would just be easier for everyone that wants to watch it back that it's not going to be like two hours long can you guys hear me properly this time because i know last time i wasn't wearing my mic i'm wearing my mic now so hopefully if you guys can hear me just let me know Is it 8 p.m.? No, it's, it's not literally quarter past nine. I was planning to do it at nine. Well, I said eight to nine. I, kn I knew it was probably going to be closer to the nine o'clock. <laughs> eight o'clock was a bit too hopeful because it, I was trying to learn how to uh, share the screen and stuff like that with you guys. So hopefully, I think I, I think I think I nailed it, mate. I think I nailed it. <laughs> Sounds good, yeah? Hearing you perfectly. All right, good, good. I'll leave it like a couple more minutes. We'll have a little chat and then we're going to... I think some of you guys have probably already watched the video that we're going to react to but I just want to kind of react to it just because obviously I'd, I only know things from my personal experience and like I can share my experience with you guys but I feel like this video from James Smith is quite um more intellectual you know what I mean uh, and he comes with some good information I watched, watched it a while ago I haven't really watched it but I just remembered it as a really good video I remember talking about um like periods and stuff on my story and then so many people messaged me and said about this video so that's why i want to react to it because i think it's a really good video if you haven't seen it it'll be really good and then i'll talk to you guys about like how i personally manage my period you know what i mean um hello hello jillian um what video from james smith so it is actually called um Female fat loss and menstrual cycle. We're gonna watch it in a minute anyway. Um, so yeah, make sure you've got a drink, guys. So you can have a coffee. Not, not you can. You can choose whatever drink. But I'm not telling you guys what to drink. Grab a coffee. Grab a Vimto. Grab a light Pepsi Max or a Dr Pepper or whatever, whatever drink. Um, I've come prepared. Yeah, I've got my coffee. Right. I've got my Vimto, <laughs> and I've got two cans of Dr Pepper Zero, <laughs> because, yeah, I'm a thirsty ass, oh, I'm not going to swear actually, if you want this to be monetized after, <laughs> um, wait till you get older and the big old M hits, oh, sorry if I knocked my mic there, wait till you get older and the big old M, Ashley was actually talking about that earlier, because it's like really hot in this flat, yeah, I, I don't know if you guys know, like, obviously, when you are when you live in a flat, I feel like it's just extra hot compared to, like, a house, and, like, it's just extra hot in it, and she's like, oh, when the, when the menopause hits, like, I don't even know how I'm going to live, because <laughs> she hates getting hot, she's literally just like, I can't deal with it. Oh my goodness, it's so nice to see you live, P.S., I love you, girly, I love you too, you missed it, didn't you, last time, I remember you saying that you missed it. I, I wanted to give you guys like enough notice this time because last time I wasn't sure whether I was going to be able to even do it. So, uh, yeah. Hey Louise, what's occurring? So yeah, today I'm going to be instead of like doing like a normal video because basically, um, I filmed a what I eat in a day video, and 
my like I, t I don't know if you guys I've told you guys I'm pretty sure like my laptop like the storage in here is rubbish so like when I try it and I've got like videos on here and like ready to upload if that makes sense and then like it's just long like, I don't have uh, enough storage but I've bought a hot external hard disk disk an external hard what is it drive and that's coming tomorrow so I'll be able to edit so hopefully that video will actually be up on the weekend so I thought I would do like a live for you guys anyway and it, like I can just like save it and it, people can watch it as well I've been asked about like um, the menstrual cycle periods and cravings and all that quite a lot so I thought you know it'd be good to just do a live in it <laughs> um, and then that video will go up on the weekend and then normal video on Monday as well so extra extra videos and I want to do like a, a live so yeah anyway like I was saying this video is going to be about like periods and stuff yeah <laughs> um I got a notification on my phone where did you give us the notice um I didn't like uh do a what I tried to do last time where I was like it comes up saying that I'm about to stream but I did like a post if that makes sense um and I just kind of said that I was going to go live tonight. Because last time I did the, um, it was like where it notifies you what time I'm going to go on stream. I, I put 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm at 10 o'clock at night. And then apparently people were waiting on there. So I didn't want to do it this time just in case I missed it up again. Um, Louise, I've had a bit of PM binge tonight and I feel guilty. Don't feel guilty about it. It happens. And if PM means premenstrual premenstrual um it's not completely normal for, to feel extra hungry on your period I, like it i think it's actually normal i remember every time i was about to come on my period like the week before i was like extra hungry but i'm going to talk about that after anyway so i'll be all ready to do right hold on it says please check the video resolution does does the video look all right or is it like really rubbish are you back at the gym yet? Yeah, I'm back at the gym. Um, I went back on Monday. Ah! Uh, I literally, guys, right? I can't believe that two weeks off of working out, yeah, made me so unfit. Like, I was literally, like, just doing what I would normally do, lifting weights, even, like, a little bit lighter, doing an extra warm-up. I was like, <gasps> like, I felt, like, out of breath, and I was getting, like, really tired. I was like, what's going on? Literally, you have to stay consistent with it. Otherwise, like, it's so mad how, like, you could build up your fitness for such a long time, and as soon as you take two weeks off, mate and then i was like sore the next day like after just doing what i would normally do even going a little bit um even a little bit easier yeah and it was mad mate like mad and then my upper body chest and then i had my rest day on wednesday and then i went again today for legs smashed it mate but if you can see like i've bruised like my shoulders here from the hack squat does anyone else get bruised from that looks fine um, hey, yay yeah, Louise, hello Louise, hey Kay, so happy to catch you, I'm an Essex girl who's living in Florida, oh sick, how's that going, and I love listening to your voice, reminds me of home, I'm on the calorie counting lifestyle because of you, yes mate, calorie counting, seco, calories in, calories out, also do I sound like I'm from Essex, because I see so many people commenting on OBCB's video when he was reacting to me, then I sound like I'm from Essex, I don't, I don't know, I guess it's a compliment, I don't know, um, it's actually 10 p.m. here. Where are you at? Um, vu, 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 I'm so sorry if I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> vu, vu, siwa, fumba. Okay, right. Hello from Yorkshire. Hey, hello from Mexico. Oh, yes, mate. Oh, you are an ins inspiration. I probably did not. That sounded French. <laughs> uh... Alright, I'm not able to join your membership, not sure if it's because I'm not in England. I tried around five times all different ways, card and PayPal. I think, so with the membership, I think what's the issue from what I googled is that if you're on an iPhone for some reason, the join button doesn't show up and if you click the link it doesn't work. So what you've got to do is like copy and paste the link into like the web browser. So you've got it into the web browser on your phone and copy and paste that link that I've got in my description. and that should help you and then if not then I don't know you you it shouldn't matter what country you're in like I'm pretty sure it shouldn't matter um I'm going to start using your tips I have a lot of fat on my stomach it's very large and I'm worried about loose skin is there any way to avoid this um 
there's not really a way to avoid loose skin. Uh, you, you just, I think there's things that can help prevent it. Obviously, losing weight gradually and not like really fast um, will help the like skin gradually shrink. But I still think like it doesn't matter if you've got quite a lot of weight to lose, and it depends on like your genetics, your age, whether you've been overweight, like how long you've been overweight for, and all that stuff. But I think like there's things that can kind of help, maybe. But not a lot, if that makes sense. It depends on how much weight you've got to lose as well. And as well, don't let loose skin hold you back from losing weight. Because I'm telling you now, I have loose skin and I don't regret losing weight because of it. Like, even if I never have loose skin surgery and I always have this loose skin, then, like, it's 100% worth it to me. So don't ever think, like, that... Don't ever let it put you off of losing weight. I have an Android and I was able to become a member. Yeah, I think it, the problem is with um, the iPhones for some reason. I don't know what it is. I'm pretty sure it's from iPhones. So, okay. Um, so, guys, the ones, those of you that can't become a member because of, um, it, those of you that are struggling to become a member, do you have an iPhone? Ooh, I can send you a bottle of good tequila with a low carb margarita. Ashley, you're liking margaritas. I really wanted Ashley to join my stream. She's got the same hairstyle as me. Can you just show your face? Just show your hair. Come here. Come on, beautiful. Come here. Come here. Just pop your head in and just show your hair. Come on. Come and say hello. <laughs> oh, I can do so. Hey, you see? Yeah, do you guys like Ashley's hair? She did my hair for me. I want to sleep in it and like, like, just not mess it up so I can wear it tomorrow. If you see me with this hairstyle tomorrow, yeah, it's because I slept in my hair and I'm not touching it. Yes, I have an iPhone. I'm telling you, it's an iPhone. Copy and paste the um, copy and paste the thingy, the link. Phew. In the USA, I can only get a teeny bottle of Nando sauce, and it's five dollars i think five dollars in um pounds is like three pounds i think and it's roughly about that price here as well to be honest it depends if it's a big bottle if it's a small bottle and it's five dollars and that is a rip off um both have beautiful hair what angle what angle all right all right we're gonna get into it now so we're, gonna, we're talking about the premenstrual cycle we're gonna learn yeah i'm guessing we're all ladies here if there's any guys here you can learn too because you you, you guys need to learn yeah not you need to learn you guys need to uh appreciate what us women go through and that it's just a little bit harder for us to lose weight especially during that time all right can i get an amen i'm joking <laughs> okay right so i'm gonna share my screen yeah and i don't know if i've done it right so you guys need to let me know and you're gonna see what i can see as well so i think that's pretty cool you can see like behind the scenes basically yeah so all right i'm blaming you on my new nando sauce addiction lol love your videos trying to use your hints and tips giving me motivation to go to the gym yes mate so i like to hear if if I'm if I am uh if 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 I'm the reason you're addicted to Nando sauce, that is a good thing for me, yeah. Like the video. <laughs> oh yeah, guys, um leave a like if uh you're enjoying the stream. Uh it really helps it helps it, yeah, I think anyway. <laughs> Alright, Ashley big hugs. Alright, yes, amen. Okay, so let me see if I can do this. Um so I need to I'm gonna share the screen. So, boom. Right, okay. Am I sharing the screen? Yeah, I'm sharing the screen. All right. You can see the screen? Yeah, you can see what I can see? Okay. I'm, I just went, right. Let's see if we could do this. Hit, right. Yeah, we can see your screen. All right. So, I'm going to, this is the video by James Smith. Yeah, uh, it's called Female Fat Loss and the Menstrual Cycle. I'm just going to press play and let the audio play for a second just to make sure you guys can hear it and then I'm going to go back and because I can't even see your messages right now. I don't know how other people do it. <laughs> can you tell like I'm not, you know, not a pro. Anyway, so I'll play. There are a lot of personal trainers out there that do not fully understand the difference between training men and training women. And for a long can period you hear of this, my time yeah? as a trainer. Can you hear that? Let me know quickly. 
not quickly, but you know, I'm like, it's a bit delayed. You are a pro now on the lives, Lou. Yes. Maybe one day. Yeah. Can you guys hear it, yeah? When I was playing the video. Yeah, okay. All right, so we're going to watch it. Um, I'll be stopping and that, and then uh, we'll comment, and you guys can hear. Sorry, I'm just going to do it. Also, can I there say are a lot of personal well, trainers so out there that do not fully understand the difference between training men and training women. And for a long period of my time as a trainer, I just thought they had different accessory sets. I thought the chicks trained their glutes, the guys trained their arms, and that was about the only difference. But when looking at fat loss, when looking at training, when looking at performance, there are vast differences between training men and training women. First of all, if we look at fat loss, fat loss is going to be different for a woman versus a man. For a start, men typically burn more calories because they are bigger, they are larger entities, which means that if you go to a restaurant with your partner and you both pick the same meal, it's going to take the women, in most cases, longer to burn that same amount of calories. Now this- Can I just say, yeah, I did not know this, and you know when I was, well, I obviously I know it in the sense of um, the bigger you are, the more calories you burn, and that's hence why men tend to be able to eat a lot, a lot more, and men, typically have more muscle mass but it, it doesn't apply to everyone because obviously um you've got some men that are smaller than women so it's, it's not like a, a cookie cutter thing i don't think but when i was like overweight me and my partner i used to eat exactly the same as him and i never used to see it as a like an issue or that i shouldn't be i should be eating a little bit less like i literally ate the same if not more than him and i would justify that amount i eat by the fact that he was eating the same and he's not overweight so I mustn't be eating the same I mustn't be overeating because he's eating it and he's not gaining weight so there's obviously something wrong with me like I remember always thinking that and it's actually like it's quite interesting I think a lot of people do that as well me to say that hey my name's James Smith and I think women should have smaller meal portions that's not what I'm saying but these have to be taken into consideration then again, if a man and a woman go to the gym, both with the exact same outcome of burning, say, a thousand calories, they would both make the same positive impact into their diet, let's say. They will burn the same amount of fat if they're in a calorie deficit. However, on average, it takes the woman about 30% longer to achieve this. So then you have an argument that if you were to have a workplace initiative where you're allowed an hour at lunch to go to the gym and stay active, women could push back and be like, actually, I ate the same as my husband last night, therefore I need an hour and a half for lunch. This can also have consequences if you and your partner go to the gym and you both train for an hour. Technically, if you wanted to elicit the same calorie burn, although that's not my approach, I don't think we're hamsters. I don't think we live to burn calories and go to the gym to do so. In theory... Can I just say uh, amen? Comment, amen, amen. It's true. We don't go to the gym just to burn calories and like try and hit a certain amount of calories. Go gym, exercise, enjoy your exercise. Yeah, that's what I say. Enjoy your exercise like cardio it doesn't have to be like painful where you try and like burn a certain amount of calories do something you enjoy and like the calories is like an added bonus if that makes sense it gets you healthy you're burning calories but you don't like don't i don't think it's a good idea to go to a gym with uh like okay i need to burn 300 calories because of this this and that i think it's always better to just go work out as hard as you can like um obviously don't push yourself way too hard but you know what i mean like enjoy it Life is about like enjoying exercise, right? Enjoy it, guys, <laughs> as much as you can. The man could be ready to go home at 60 minutes into the session. The female would need 90 minutes. One thing that I found very important to my clients, especially seeing as the majority of my clients are female, is that they understand their own menstrual cycle. Now, I've done a lot of talks on this over the years, including a TED talk, and sometimes I talk to the women in the room, sometimes I talk to the men in the room, sometimes I speak to both because ultimately they both should have a fundamental understanding of what's going on and how it's going to impact them. I jokingly say, without being a misogynist, that men seem to think there's one bad week in a menstrual cycle, the period. And trust me when I say this, that's not the bad period. If anything, that's the good period. And if you're going to tell your missus that you've got a stag do or that you're going out on a lad's holiday or whatever it is, that's probably one of your better times to bring it up. There are I don't know whether I agree with that though. I feel like there's there's not really a good time to bring that up anyway. <laughs> so, I'm like, if I want my period, yeah, I want my man to bring me like, you know what I mean? Like just be there, rub my belly, rub my feet, tickle me. I don't know. Like don't, don't be on a stag doing that. <laughs> and it, but then even like the week before and the week after, it's like when is there, when is there a good time? Comment. Let me know. Yeah, I'll see you in a minute. When is the good time? When 
feeling. I don't, I don't feel like there's a good time. Parts <laughs> in the menstrual cycle that you're about to find out about, which are going to be very bad times to bring them up. So I'm going to pull up a diagram now. This is the typical menstrual cycle, 28 days long. Now, no two menstrual cycles are exactly the same. If you've got a longer menstrual cycle, it can be a sign of maybe having polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS. If you want to have a further discussion about that, watch my TED talk, type in James Smith, TED. Now, straight down the middle, we've got ovulation. Now, ovulation occurs at usually day 14. This is where, as a female, you are your most fertile. Now, making sense of that, just before that, we see a spike of testosterone. Typically, you see some of your best lifts in the gym and best performances surrounding this time. Ladies, you'll also get pretty horny around this time. And it makes sense from a procreation standpoint that... Just talk... I'm not talking about the horny part yet. Just talking about, like, the time where you feel stronger. I don't know about you guys, but for me, there is, like, this time. And I don't even know when I at, where I am in that time, if that makes sense. But there's always, like, a week in the month where like my lifts go really good well and I feel stronger I feel more energetic and stuff like that so this resonates with me and then I also have a week um where I my lifts are like every single month and I'm on the implant right now so I I'm not actually having regular periods so even months where I don't have a period I still have this one week where I feel more tired more like grouchy my lifts in the gym like it just feels like I'm basically slugging through the workout, like, oh, like, you're just trying to push yourself, and it doesn't feel like you're getting a good workout, for me anyway, and, yeah, I think he talks about that as well, but it's quite interesting. Middle of the menstrual cycle, when you're most fertile, you would be more inclined to want to engage in sex. Men, take note. When we look at the beginning period, I've put here between the first and the seventh day. Again, this is going to vary a lot between women, and as we can see, this sits in the follicular phase. Now, these four weeks in the menstrual cycle should be seen as four different segments. Follicular phase, two weeks. Luteal phase, two weeks. Block one, period. Block two, leading up to ovulation. Block three, first week of the luteal phase. Block four, fourth week of the luteal phase. It's very important that with my clientele and with women that you don't measure yourself week on week because across eight weeks, eight measurements, you've only really got two measurements of each physiological state. And week one versus week three or week two versus week four could be giving you an inaccurate reading depending on where you're at in your cycle. So it's important that we measure whether it's circumference, weight, whatever it is, week one, week one, week two, week two. And it really is important and imperative for women around the world to ensure that they have a few months in the bank of measurements so they can see any trends that are going to occur. So one of the things that for me personally, I don't, I feel like it, it depends on the person. For me personally, with measure, body measurements, yeah, like um, tape measure and stuff, monthly, I would always say monthly because it will fluctuate quite a lot weekly. But I do, I when I was using weight, I did weigh myself weekly. And I think it is important to weigh yourself weekly. Um, or it depends. Obviously, some people like to prefer to weigh themselves monthly. But, but for me personally, weighing myself weekly was a good measurement and also like even every day sometimes like every other day i stand on the scale and it's just i find it as long as it's not making you feel a certain way like making you feel bad about yourself or anything i think it's good to understand when your body fluctuates and like for me when i i didn't know what i didn't know that a week before my period that i was going to gain loads of like water weight um because like i said i was on my implant and when i first started losing weight i didn't have any periods until i was like uh four or five months in and I think my weight loss affected my hormones. I, I, obviously, I can't say that for sure. But um, this is what me and the, the nurse on the phone, uh, she said this as well. It, it's possible that with my like drastic weight loss, it, my hormones all changed in my body and stuff. And it just did something with the implant. And then I started coming on my periods and it was like, first it was like messed up and then it started to go regular. But before I even had my first period, the week before, I was obviously feeling hungrier and I was in my, my calorie deficit. I hadn't gone over my calories and I was weighing myself and I was like five pounds heavier. And I was like, what is going on? I remember panicking, like, I don't understand what's going on. Why am I losing, like, why is my weight, you know, going up? And I felt a little bit defeated, but I just carried on, like, being consistent with what I was doing. And then I, I came on my period and then the weight went back down again. And then I... And it, as that happened, like, each and every month, I ended up becoming a lot more, like, when my weight would go up and uh, stuff like that, like, I would and I would get, like, this one spot under my mouth. Do you remember I used to always get that, like, that one spot? Um, and I was able to then, like, understand my body more and understand that, okay, 
well, when my weight, my when it's like a week before my period is due, and I didn't even know, bear in mind, I didn't, my period wasn't regular, so it wasn't like I knew what day my period was going to come, it was random, but I, I could tell by the things that my body was doing, my weight going up, and the spot, and the way I was feeling, extra hungry, um, more tired, and stuff like that, I didn't could, I understood my body, and that's what I'm trying, I'm trying to say, which I'm not getting my words out properly, but... I think it's important to kind of understand your body's fluctuations so that when you do step on the scale and you see it go up, that you don't panic and you can understand it more and understand what your body's doing. So for me, I don't personally think that you should only weigh yourself like once a month or do measurements once a month. I think it depends on the person and whether they can um, not like obsess over it, if that makes sense, and then feel bad about it. But if you, I understand what he's saying, and obviously he makes sense. But I just want to put it out there that it's not wrong to weigh yourself once a week. And when you do see your weight going up and you can see and then you just know that it's more likely going to go down. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, I always say if that makes sense. I've realised with training women over the years, and I've trained a lot of women, is that asking someone to put themselves in the calorie deficit across all four weeks of this cycle isn't always realistic, obtainable, sustainable or achievable. During the luteal phase, the latter part of the menstrual cycle, a woman's metabolic rate will increase. On average, between 1 and 300 calories a day, the average woman does consume about 500 calories more. And this is often a time where people can feel disheartened, like they're falling away from their diet or, you know, they can't keep control of the cravings. And instead of looking to accomplish great amounts of fat loss or large deficits in this period, I incline my clientele to say, look, why don't we program three pieces of fruit a day? through the latter part of the menstrual cycle. At 100 calories a piece of fruit, we can then not only play into that increase in calorie burn through the increase in metabolic rate, but then we can also, in that same period, maybe not look to diet. If this is where you're struggling with cravings and often can end up feeling deflated and like you're not sticking to your diet, then let's not diet here. If we choose to diet in just the first two weeks of the menstrual cycle, that's ultimately going to be better and far superior to starting a new trend or a stupid fad or detox or whatever it is, cleanse, and falling off the wagon and feeling deflated. Dieting successfully for two weeks of every cycle is going to be dieting for no weeks of no cycle. So mm. if you're someone that struggles with the craving, struggles to reduce your food. In- yeah, that's that's true. That is, I agree with that 100%. And I even think the same for any at any point. Um, like, I've got a video coming out on Monday about... Um, about what I'm about to say about overeating over the holidays and stuff. Um, but eating at maintenance to s- avoid them cravings when you really need to is so much better than um, keep getting into that like binge restrict cycle and then ending up giving up and failing and then, then um, over overeating and gaining weight, all, all the weight that you lost back, if that makes sense. But for me, I just wanted to say what I did. So what I, I ended up learning to kind of listen to my body because obviously a week, it was mostly like a week before my period that I would get like really strong cravings and even sometimes during my week and I'd be like really hungry as well. So what I decided to do was because well, I was trying to eat at 1,800 calories whilst I was losing weight and I was feeling like that and I literally felt like I was starving and 1,800 calories. I was like, why am I so hungry? I can't stop eating and I was craving chocolate and I was like, if I carry on, then I'm going to end up just like going through the whole cupboards and just eating everything. So I decided to allow myself to have the range between 1,800 and 2,000 calories, which I think was roughly my maintenance. Um, at a point, maybe it was a little bit higher, but I la- allowed myself to go up to 2,000 calories. And what I did with them extra 200 calories was if I was really craving a chocolate, then I would allow myself to have that chocolate or I would try and find like the lowest calorie chocolate or like I say all the time, um, I, my cravings are mostly like chocolate and sweet kind of stuff. So what I did was like add choc- like cocoa powder into my oats, use skinny fuco chocolate syrup, like um, have some homemade protein bars with the chocolate. Um, and then the extra 200 calories, I would use that for whatever I was craving and allow myself to have that during the week. And I thought as long as I don't gain weight during these weeks, it's like, that's the main thing. And um I ended up, like, by the time, like, I would finish my period and then I would have my next weigh-in, all of the weight that I gained, plus a little bit more, went. So, like, I remember having, like, a drop in, like, four pounds the next week and it was just, a, like, a backlog of the two weeks, but you couldn't see it because of the water retention. So, this is, like, a massive, like, a really helpful tip. That's why I wanted to show this video as well. 
ache. Maybe you only diet in the first two weeks of your menstrual cycle. Another important thing is when you start a diet, looking at the menstrual cycle, it, it's something that's quite clear that if you're going to start an initiative, whether it's calorie reduction, calorie tracking, start it at the beginning of your cycle. Because if you start a diet, say t day 21, going to the toughest part of your cycle, PMS, cravings, not to mention towards that latter part, the end of your luteal phase, we're looking at highest chance of injury, coordination issues, you know, strength decreases. You might only be able to lift about half what you normally can, and that's because your cycle is interfering. And what pains me is the amount of trainers over the years. They're like, come on, Sharon, you got this last week. What's happened to you? Why are you so weak today? Come on, put the effort in. Little do a lot of trainers know that there are massive differences that occur and fluctuations through this. And it might make sense that we do look for the aggressive fat loss in the first two weeks. We look for the performances surrounding ovulation, then taper off towards the end of the week. Maybe stick to gym equipment where, you know, like a leg press or a leg extension and maybe do things that don't require such coordination. It might make sense to go back to maintenance with calories through these weeks and treat it as almost like a refeeding phase. Being more pragmatic with the approach that we give to when to attack, when to back off in the menstrual cycle is imperative to long-term successful dieting. It's also important to note that if you dial back your calories too far or you're doing too much exercise, you can see a discontinuation of your menstrual cycle. The reason being is the body requires an excess of calories, about 50,000 to survive pregnancy. So if at any point your uh, body fat levels, glucose availability, there are certain responses hormonally, should your body not feel that you would survive pregnancy, you will lose your menstrual cycle. And a lot of women that compete suddenly, where's my menstrual cycle gone, where's my period gone, it can take a lot of people a long time to get it back. Other situations can be like polycystic ovary syndrome, and again, I would opt for you to watch the TED Talk. It's important that we... So I wanted to quickly make a point in what he was saying about the exercise. Obviously, like I said, during them, like that one week where I feel a lot weaker, I still go to the gym. I don't say, okay, I don't use it as an excuse to be like, okay, I'm not going to go because I'm going to be weaker. But what I do is I literally just like try and push through workout as much as I can. Um, I do more things that I enjoy. So like I love doing squats and all that stuff. So I would just more focus on just what I can do. And even like I might even have to like lighten the weight a little bit more and do higher reps. So that's more, more what I focus on when I'm feeling like that. I do lighter lighter weight and higher reps. Um, and I still get a decent workout in. It's not like as good as it would be, and I don't feel as great. But I always feel better once I've gone to the gym. And that's the thing that you've got to keep in mind, like with cramps and stuff like that. Yeah, you might feel like oh I can't I can't I'm I'm not like. I just feel like I just want to chill and stuff. But most of the time, if you get up and exercise, it's going to make you feel a lot better. Exercise is supposed to be really good for you, for cramping and stuff like that as well. And even if you can't get up and go to the gym, walk. When in doubt, walk, guys. Yeah. So get up and go for a walk. And it, it always makes me feel better anyway. With the wind of the knowledge we know about the menstrual cycle, when to work hard, when to dial back, when to take measurements, when to compare the two, when to seek progress and when not to. Ultimately, men watching this, you should be eternally grateful that you have one physiology that pretty much goes on forever and you don't have to worry about these. This is considerations that women must make for competing in a sport, peak week, whether it's lifting, a CrossFit competition, whatever it is. And I think that we need knowledge and empathy from trainers towards their clientele and also empathy from women around the world that don't beat themselves up when going through tough parts of their cycle. And Yes, 100%, yeah. So... This is why I wanted to do this video as well and share this because this is a really good video. Um, is that because once you, I feel like it's so important, once you realize that that is the reason why you feel like that, it makes you feel so much better and it makes you understand a lot more and you can kind of do what he said, like make plans around it and kind of, the more you understand about your body and the more you understand of why things are the way they are and like why your weight might go up a little bit and why you might feel weaker and it just makes you feel so much better, especially when you're on your period, yeah, and you already feel like rubbish anyway. You don't need to be feeling like you're failing and you don't understand why. So understanding is so important. And we just have to remember to be a lot more kinder to ourselves. Um, yeah, just be kind to ourselves and be kind. <laughs> My and probably most like importantly, cackle. men don't see fluctuations in performance, hindrance of coordination, higher chances of injuries. So we've got it pretty good. The only thing we've got to work around the hangover. And you don't have to give birth. Yeah? You don't have to push a baby out of your vajayjay, all right? So be grateful. But for women, it's a lot more complex. It's a lot more difficult.
And should we spread the understanding and the basic knowledge surrounding the menstrual cycle, we can give women around the world a better time of training, a better time of dealing with their performances, however good or bad they might be, and ultimately a better time of dieting, where they might only look to diet for two weeks of every month, or whatever works for them. Every person watching this, especially the ladies, you are to become your own scientist with your cycle and how you respond to it, because ultimately how you react might be very different to your friends. So there is some insight to the menstrual cycle from what I've had. Yeah. So. Oh, let me just make that not change. Right. So I shall be. Just move that. Are we just on me? Right. So yeah, was that helpful, guys? Hang on. Um, regarding being horny, I never felt feel like it, lol. But that is a different. Sorry. Um, I'm getting a lot of messages. So yeah, was that helpful, guys? Can you see me? Am I back on? Just me. Really helpful. Much to think about. So yeah. Um. What else do I want to say? I want to talk about... So for me, like I said, with my implant, I didn't have periods I um, until like four months in. And then, it's like four or five months after I lost a significant amount of weight. Fun fact, apparently when you lose a lot of weight, your hormones in your body can change. Here we go. <laughs> and it can actually, if you've already got an implant, it can apparently, from what I was discussing with the nurse... Um, I don't know if this is like a proper scientific fact, yeah, but this is what we were talking about, that it can actually like change the way you bleed and it, it made me like mess up my bleeding a lot and then I started having regular periods and then eventually like they just went back to not having periods again with the implant, but like I will have like a random one, um, but even though I'm not having periods, I still get that one week where I am weaker and I don't have enough energy and then I also get the week where I am like hungry um and like i feel like i need extra calories and then just what i do on them days is i allow myself to eat a lot more like i've already told you guys that i give myself a range between like 2000 to 2500 i'm lowering that range now i feel like i needed to do that um before like maybe a few weeks ago i feel like i eaten a lot more at closer to 2500 i could feel myself like gaining a little bit more body fat um Maybe, I feel like that was more when I couldn't work out and stuff. So, at the minute, I did go on a little mini cut for, uh, like, last week, 1,800 calories. And then up to, the, up to today, from today, I'm basically back on 2,000 calories. But I, I give myself a range between a couple of hundred calories so that I can allow myself to eat a little bit more if I feel like I really need to, if I feel really hungry. Um, and, obviously, I eat low-calorie-dense foods. So, if I'm eating loads of low, a big volume of low-calorie-dense foods and I'm still hungry, it's because I feel like my body will probably need it. Um, and, obviously, there's a difference between, like, just um, feeling to eat certain foods, like chocolates and stuff, and actually being, like, physically hungry. And there's, like, literally been so many weeks where I felt, like, like not so many weeks altogether, but, like, a week in each month where I feel extra hungry. And I think it's, like, the period week, but I'm not actually having a period. It's weird. Um... I don't want to be fat anymore. I just love so food so much. <laughs> that is relatable. <laughs> relatable AF. <laughs> um, can you show the us a diagram, Louise? We couldn't see the video. Wait, could you not see the video? Are you joking? We can't see him. Can't see him. Can't can't see the diagram. What? We can hear, but we can't. <gasps> so you guys were just watching my face. <laughs> can't see oh for crying out loud <laughs> so long what so you couldn't see you you guys couldn't see my screen i don't understand what maybe we forget i don't understand all right i'm getting extra hot it's just stressing me out how do people do this what the hell but what a beautiful face it is. <laughs> Thanks. No, but it's kind of blurred out. Just you and a blank white screen. We could hear what you were saying. It's 
it said exit screen. Um, when you made it fit the entire screen, it got blurry. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, oh, I, I, hang on. Right, so you guys see my screen again. I don't know whether we should watch it again. Should we watch it again? I'll just show you the period diagram. Right. Where is it? Here it is. So that's the follicular phase. The follicular phase. This is where your period is. And to be honest, it kind of went over my head what these little squiggly lines mean. But from what I understand, yeah, there's certain points in your period. Yeah, this is ovulation. Um, this is why I let him say it, isn't it? Because right, this is right. Let's just learn this together. Let's pretend that we understand this. Okay, so this is the period, right? This is. Maybe th maybe this means where you ha you can lift more, you know, and you're like you've got that peak, and then it comes back down again to the end, and then you're obviously going to come back, and you're back on the period, and then it goes up after your period. Yeah, it, that is it because it's always after my. Sorry, I got really excited. So it's normally like after your period. Once I come off my period, it's like oh, it's gone. Then it's like then it's when you said you're like the horniest apparently. I don't know whether that's true or not. Actually, would you say you're horny after your period? <laughs> it's been it's been a long time since I've had my period, to be honest. So I couldn't tell you, but I guess it makes sense. And then you lift heavier. You're like glowing. Your skin is looking good. Your hair. And apparently, this point in your period, he doesn't say it yet, but you're the most attractive to the opposite sex or to any sex, to be honest. Like you're like the most attractive. Like you're glowing, you're strong. Your hair's looking good, your skin's looking good, and then it's like it all falls to shit again. So we don't get a long time as you can see. But you heard the information and saw my face, so I guess next time I'll do better. I'm sorry guys. Um go back. I can't believe it. I'm so sorry you guys couldn't see. Really explain to you everything you do, hi Louise. I'm just finishing this month's cycle ever since last. Tuesday, one week and one day. I've, I feel like I need glasses. I've stayed the same. How was your weight week affected, loss affected by the cycle? So hi Louise, I'm just finishing this month's cycle and since last Tuesday, one week and one day, I've stayed the same way. Right, so if you've just finished your, your this month's cycle, so you, I'm, t I'm guessing that means like you've just finished your period. Yeah, I will give it like another week. You, you'll, you could be retaining water and then it could just like drop. Yeah, like don't stress like up. Uh, it, sometimes it takes a little while for it to drop back down. So how it affected my cycle is literally like a week before I would come on, my weight goes up and I'm a lot heavier. And it, even now, even though I'm not coming on my period, my weight still does that. It goes up and it's like, it'll be up by a few pounds. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then, and then you'll be on and then it eventually like goes all the way down. So then, let me see if I can go on my, um, my Instagram, yeah, my old Instagram. Because I had my weigh-ins and I remember it, oh no, I feel like, I don't know, alright, we're not going to do that because you can't really see anyway. So, what it would be like, it it would, I would lose and then I would like maintain and then my, like, I would maintain on my weigh-in and then I'm like, what, so I've maintained this week, that's fine. Then like the next day or the day after I weigh myself and the weight has gone like all the way up and I'm like, what? Like I don't understand why I've gained so much weight. And then it was like, just stay there. And, like, and I was eating in a calorie deficit, doing everything like right, like the same. And then I would come on my period and my weight would still be up. And then like a few days after my period, I would weigh myself and then I would have lost like four pounds. So like the two pounds from the week before and then the two pounds from the week that I gained weight, if that makes sense. So like, just give it time. Just, just don't let it make you um, feel like, oh, what I'm doing isn't working. I'm going to give up. Does it happen to someone else that a couple of days before starting their cycle they binge? Does it happen to someone else that a couple of days before? That's just because you're feeling extra hungry before. If you if you start feeling if you know when your period is coming, if that makes sense, then and you struggle with that, 
and you feel like you could benefit from upping your calories to maintenance, then do that. You know what I mean? Because, um, like like you said, if you guys heard it, um, so sorry you guys can watch it as well. I don't understand why that happened. I'm so annoyed about that. I'm gutted, mate. I'm bloody gutted. What is the time? It's nearly 10 to 1. Advice, Louise, if you had three days off calorie counting, would you bother weighing afterwards or just get straight back on counting and not weigh for like a week? Um, it depends on how it makes you feel. If you can kind of separate it and understand that when you weigh yourself, it's going to be up, then, and you're not going to feel like guilty about it and it's not going to make you like feel really bad, then you can weigh yourself. Um, just this kind of, I, I do it sometimes when I know I've eaten a lot more calories to kind of see, I'm just curious, I'm like, mm, I wonder. And then you, it's, it's good to kind of know, because then like a few days later, you will see how easy that the weight drops down, if that makes sense, because most of it is a lot more water, because obviously you're holding a lot more carbs, carbs hold a lot more water, so it'll make you weigh, uh, weigh water weight more. Um, and just like, obviously, if you've overeaten, you might have had a lot more salt. All of that stuff just retains a lot, more, a lot more water. Plus, when you've got more food in your belly, you're going to weigh a lot more. So it's kind of helpful to know when you weigh yourself every day to kind of see it go down and just realise that it, that it's not that much of a big deal. But then also, if you weigh yourself, it depends on the person, because then if you weigh yourself the next day and you're like, oh, my days, I'm five pounds up, and then you think it's all five pounds of fat and it makes you feel really bad and makes you spiral, then that's not helpful. So, yes. Sometimes, like, it's better to just leave it a week, like, go back back on track, like, start tracking again, go back to your normal exercise routine, and then weigh yourself in a week, and you you probably won't even see any difference in your weight. It'll be, like, about the same. The only thing is when you overeat, um, when you've been in a calorie... So when you, like, overeat your calories and you're in a calorie deficit, so when you're in a calorie deficit, your glycogen stores, like, empty. So then when you... Um, because your glycogen stores are the, like, think of like the little bubbles in your body. That's how I think of it. And like they have water in. So when you first start losing weight, then um, little glycogen stores and little uh, water bubbles, that's how I think of it, um, they have to kind of like empty first before you start actually burning fat. So then, um, don't quote me on this as well because I'm not professional, but this is from my own understanding. So check it before you take this as scientific information. But they have to kind of empty before you start like burning fat. Yeah, so that's why when you first start losing weight, you you drop a lot of weight in your first week because you lose a lot of water weight. And then when you overeat, then stores, then glycogen stores fill back up first. And then you start like gaining body fat if you even eat over that, if that makes sense. So then when you go back into your deficit from the next couple of days, your body then has to, when you go into a deficit, it then has to empty them stores before you start burning fat again. So when you do overeat, you slow down your weight loss, but you won't necessarily, if you only eat or overeat on one day, you won't necessarily gain fat. Um, it, it depends on how much, obviously, you overeat. 3,500 calories is about a pound of fat. So if you ate that, you would have to, to gain a pound of, one pound of pure fat, yeah, you would have to eat 3,500 calories on top of your actual um maintenance calories say your maintenance calories is 2000 you literally have to eat like 5500 calories and maybe even a little bit more because your body's meat increases and stuff like that as well when you eat a lot more like it would it, be quite hard to gain a pound of fat in a day um but yeah so you just you, what you would do is like you slow down using weight so you obviously keep that in mind like it would just take a little bit longer for you to start burning fat again hi deborah ashley 1988 hi Craving chocolate before or after period usually means your body needs iron. Yeah, because you lose you lose um iron. Iron's like your blood, isn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, when you're bleeding, you need iron. But they say, from what I was reading, is when you're on your period, it's quite important to um eat lean meats like chicken and so chicken and something else um for iron. And then, uh, apparently, like, chamomile tea uh, helps with, like, bloating. To reduce your salt intake, like, try not to eat too much salt because it can help you. That that will help make you gain more, like, hold more onto more water. So if you're obviously already bloated and that, it's going to just make it more, you more bloated. Um, exercise is good. Opinions on carb refeed. 
I'm not necessarily sure what like a carb refeed is, but like a refeed, um, from what I understand, is like when you eat your calories, um, you eat up to like maintenance or I think like slightly more to kind of give your body like a refeed when you've been in a really big deficit for a long period of time. Um, I did do a video on this like on my um, tips to like break through a weight loss plateau, that video, um, where I did say like right at the end that for a very small amount of people that need this, like if you've been in a calorie deficit for a very long time, um, that you might need it. I think it depends on whether you need it or not. I feel like if you've only just started and your weight loss has slowed down after like two weeks, you won't need a you you won't need a refeed. It depends. Like you would have to be in like uh, a big deficit for a long time, obviously. Um, yeah, I feel like I had a refeed, but I didn't like it wasn't like a planned one. Obviously, I was in a deficit, and I didn't I didn't even eat in maintenance from. January when I started all the way till July on my birthday and then on my birthday I ate their food like I, I let myself have cake I had loads of Krispy Kreme donuts um, and my weight loss was kind of like slowing down a bit by then and then I thought the week of my birthday I was like yeah I'm probably gonna gain a couple of pounds it's fine and I just like you know but I only had my birthday um where I ate whatever I wanted uh like donuts and had cake and what did I have like a burger like chicken burger like I made myself though I didn't, I didn't even get a takeaway I, want, I wanted to make it myself um and I remember like I literally lost weight that week and in my weight sped my weight loss sped up so I do think there's something behind like a little refeed thing because after the after my birthday I lost so much that like, my weight loss sped up and I was like oh my days I thought I was gonna be gaining weight and then I didn't it was mad but yeah obviously I don't I don't know like the, the proper science behind it but I remember when I was like um, reading about a refeed, I was like, ah, I feel like I had like an unintentional refeed day. <laughs> That's my opinion on it, basically. But I feel like it's not going to be for every single person that is in a calorie deficit. Have to say the blueberry French toast recipe. I've had five days straight and still not sick of looking at it. Thanks for that one. It's a good recipe, isn't it? Shout out Greg Doucette. <laughs> Um, I know this really isn't related to the topic, but I wanted to utilise this opportunity to kindly ask you for some advice. I lost, si I'm six foot, I really need a wee guys, so I'm going to go in like five minutes, but I'm, I'm six foot, 136 pounds male, and my maintenance calories is 1,280 to 1,300. 1,280, that's pretty specific, isn't it? Uh, I work out daily with... Now I'm really trying to find your name again. With weights or resistance training as well as cardio, what should I do to up my calories? Oh, thank you, Kay Kelly. Keep kicking butt. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Um, what should I do to up my calories? So, so you said you. Well, sorry. Hold on. Um, I work out daily with weights or resistance training as well as cardio. What should I do to up my calories? Um, like just build, build. I don't, I don't, I can't really say what you can do to up your calories. Obviously, build muscle. Um, and the more muscle you have, is more metabolically active. So when you like, if you spend, you're gonna have to. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take a long time to build muscle. But the more muscle you have, then the more calories you can eat. Um, and then obviously increasing your cardio, maybe moving more. Maybe like if you're exercising the only cardio you're doing is like at the gym and you're doing like an hour a day but then you're going home and you're sitting down a lot or you're very sedentary during the rest of the day then you know what I mean like that could be an issue so if you make sure like you ensure that you are moving about more during the day like someone said this about me is <laughs> someone asked me if I'm on a stimulants or something because I move about a lot and I, I can't sit still when I talk really fast and all this stuff and it just made me laugh yeah because obviously I'm just putting it out there I'm not on any stimulants apart from caffeine is a stimulant so I have coffee so there's that, and I have caffeine in my Dr Pepper Zero, or whatever. It just makes me laugh. Um, but yeah, because I move about a lot, and I can't sit still. I'm increasing my need. Yeah. So if you focus on moving a lot, it's a good job. I I move a lot. Yeah. I'm I'm burning calories. I'm actually sweating like hell as well. Um, have you done a carb read feed before? I did say that. Um, on my birthday last year, I was in a deficit for a very long time. Um, like I said, and then, yeah, I ate a lot, a lot of carbs, I had donuts and cake and that, and then I, my, my weight loss actually sped up, but it wasn't a planned refeed or anything. Um, 
Oh wait, I already just answered that. I'm so sorry, that's because I scrolled up to read the thing. Please tell me how much time you used to exercise first month. So when I when I first started um, the gym, I went for like the first, I'm pretty sure it was like 20 to 30 minutes on the treadmill on an incline. First, I couldn't do full incline for the full 30 minutes. I had to like decrease it back down to normal walking and then increase it when I could breathe. <laughs> And then yeah, um, so when I first started, like the first couple of months, I was literally well, first first couple of weeks, it was like twenty minutes, thirty minutes, I think, around that around that. And then um, I once I could, I went on the elliptical um, for another. I literally had to build myself up. Like first, I couldn't even do five minutes, and then I gradually like the more longer I could, do, I pushed myself all the time to do longer until I was basically at the gym for an hour five days a week. Um, yeah, and then. Now I go to the gym. I try not to be that long, but I always end up going there for at least two hours. But that's because I'm lifting weights and I rest a lot between sets. Um, and I I do I split my whole body up uh, between upper body and lower body. So a lot of people do like they go in and just train shoulders, and then they just train uh, biceps, and they just train triceps, or they split it up like that. Yeah. Um, I don't do that. I like to split my body parts like split it halfway so I do like my lower body so that's my quads my hamstrings my glutes my calves like I do all of that in one day um so I'm there at the, it takes me longer to do like a few exercises for each body part that I'm doing if that makes sense so I can do train so basically I train each body part twice a week because that's optimal for muscle growth so I train literally I split my um upper body I do legs on Monday and I do um upper body on Tuesday and then I have a rest day on Wednesday and then I do my legs again on uh, Thursday and then I do my upper body again on Friday so upper body tomorrow yeah what's your favorite guys what's your favorite upper body what's your favorite muscle to work out you know what I mean do, do you guys do that or do you do the push pull push legs push pull push pull legs whatever I tried doing it like that but then I felt like I was always at the gym 24 7 um which i love being at the gym but i wasn't able to have enough rest days i felt like i needed the extra rest day plus i like to go to the gym on a saturday just for cardio so um it just it just works out best for me i'm roughly 13 to 14 percent body fat as well with a fair amount of muscle i think my metabolism is just crashed on this day if you're 13 to 14 percent body fat, obviously you're male, wouldn't you? Um, that's quite low body fat anyway. So, um, yeah, you probably are like ectomorphin, or I don't know. I'm I really ch I'm chatting shit at this point. <laughs> like ectomorph, they they find it hard to gain weight, or um, no, but then if you're ectomorph and you find it hard to gain weight, then you could eat more calories, right? I don't know. Um, are you a stay-at-home mum? I'm a teacher and it's so hard to work out during the school year. Um, yeah, well, I was a support worker um, and then I went on maternity leave with, obviously, my son. And then, obviously, I'm, like, I was considered, like, a carer for my other son because he's autistic. And then I, like, my youngest only just went into nursery. Um, but, yeah, now, technically... I'm doing this as like a career now, basically. Oh, you too. <laughs> it's me. I'm your child. Um, yeah. It's considered anyway. But what do you call it? When people ask me, like, what's your job? I'm like, a content creator. <laughs> it's not really, I don't know. Hobby, but, you know. Um, hey Louise, I'm going camping with my daughter's Girl Scouts group this weekend. Should I count calories? It's up to you. Um, I I feel like it's always better to if you can stay consistent with it. That's that's the best. But if you, it depends. It really it, it depends on you. I can't really tell you what to do to be honest. Um, yeah. For me personally, what would I do? If I was to go, I would I would probably count my calories. Only time, like, but then I don't know because then sometimes I don't count my calories, but it, it depends. It's, it's your personal choice. 
I wouldn't say go if you, I, I would say like if you if you say you don't count your, if you're not going to count your calories and you know you're not just not going to count your calories because you want to like overeat then I would say like that's probably not the best idea but again it's just your choice um I don't like telling people what to do give you advice if you don't count your calories and you know you'll use it as an excuse to overeat and then you'll feel bad about it uh and your goal is to lose weight, it's probably not the best idea. But then, if you don't want to count your calories because you don't want to stress and track everything, you know it's going to probably be hard to track everything because you, I don't know, if you bring a scale with it on the floor, with it, you know what I mean? That might not be uh, <laughs> accurate, I don't know. Um, can walking the dog be seen as exercise? Yes, yes, I want a dog. And I, my dog will go on, if I had a dog, my dog would be going on walks all the time. It'd be the most spoiled dog ever for walks, they'd be walking all the time. Walking is a good thing. What's, what's funny, Ashley? What's funny? What are you saying? I wouldn't take my dog out for walks. I would take my dog out for walks all the time, really. Listen, that's <laughs> so rude. She's like, I'm mm, sure about that. It's because I, I remember one time I got a hamster. I bought you them hamsters. Yeah, Ashley bought me hamsters and then um, the novelty wore off quite quickly. Hard to put in. I remember buying you any animals. Did not ask. <laughs> ah, but then my I, I had a dwarf hamster and it turned vicious. It started biting me. It couldn't even get out of the cage because it would bite you. But I think it's because they were both in the same. It was really hard, wasn't it? Actually, because they they said to keep them together. They don't like being on their own. But then they were like fighting, and then so I separated them into two different cages, and then they. One of them was like really nice and just liked playing with me, and then the other one would just bite me. It literally was like, like proper scary. So uh, we gave we I gave um, that one to my sister because <laughs> um, it was kind of hard, obviously, with the kids and the hamster biting, and he kept escaping and I hid under the fridge. Yeah, dwarf hamsters, man. They they said that a dwarf. I'm I'm sorry, I'm talking about dwarf hamsters on. Sorry, they said it was the easiest hamster, but I don't know what happened there. That was like how many years ago? Before I even had Elijah. No, I don't know that. But anyway, well, the amount you walk, I'd wear the. It would wear the dog's legs out. See, I'm joking. I wouldn't take the the dog out like twenty four seven, but it would definitely get like at least an hour's walk every day at least. I feel that's that's good. I remember my mum used to make me walk my dog when I was a kid. She used to make me walk my dog um, literally twice a day, yeah. I, I had to wake up at like 6 o'clock in the morning when I was going to school just to walk my dog for one hour. She would not let me come home before the one hour. I had to walk him from 6 till 7 o'clock and then get ready for school. Then I would come home from school and I had to walk him for one hour after school. Your face is glowing. You look so healthy. You know what? It's probably sweat because it's bloody hot in it. <laughs> I work a very physical job. Do you think I could still lose weight if I just count calories? Yeah, you, even if you were sedentary, you could lose weight by just counting your calories. Um, obviously, it's better to be like exercise and like be healthier, and it's easier when you exercise to burn extra calories to be in a deficit. And you know what I mean. But you you can literally lose weight just by counting your calories by making sure you're in a calorie deficit through what you eat. I come home too tired to exercise. And I'm a single mum. Yeah, of course, yeah, definitely. Like, you can. Um, you can definitely lose weight by exercising. You take your doggy to the gym and he, she can walk on a treadmill. Imagine, just imagine you could bring a dog to the treadmill, um, to the gym. You just see people walk in and then, like, you look and then there's like, all the treadmills taken up because everyone brought their dog. <laughs> would you be mad? I feel like you would just think, like, it's so cute you brought this dog. I really need a wee, guys. I'm so sorry that that messed up. I'm going to have to... I don't even have like, guys, you know, right, is there anyone on here that knows how to, I keep showing everyone's videos that everyone is so informative and motivating. Oh, thank you. Um, we're nearly at 50,000 subscribers and I've got, this is what I mean, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, do any of you know how to share your screen on a stream? To show the video in a full video, or can you only you can't? I've seen people share it as a full screen, so why can't I do it? 
that's really upset me now. I felt like I was like being all techie and gonna do it and I thought I'm just not gonna do it. Good night all, thanks again Louise for the amazing videos and info. See you again soon. Have a good wee Louise. I know this is what happens when you drink a lot, you need a wee all the time. I'm um, proper, I need a wee, I'm not even joking. But yeah. Um can you do a video on gym for beginner, please? Okay, yeah, I can. But I'm not like this is this is where I find it like I need to kind of with videos like that I'm not an expert on what exercises are the best for people so I can only give like my experience if that makes sense so yeah I can say like what I found I feel like I really I, I shared my exercise journey what I did from the beginning and I feel like that is a good way to start but then everyone is different so i don't know exercise for a beginner i always think like yeah i can do that but i'm, I'm i don't want to sit there and be like i can't even think of an exercise off the top of my head this is the way you should start you know what i mean i feel like do, do people know what i mean Um, all right um but I will, I will i will see what i can do with that one um yeah i'm gonna go for a wee now so thanks everyone for joining my would you oh uh, yeah definitely i will do more vlogs definitely more vlogs is there any single working out mums who have figured out how to go for a long, brisk walk? So let me know. Wow. Is there any single working out mum? <laughs> I don't know how many kids you've got. I know it's hard to go walking with kids. But long, brisk walks as well. I know what you mean, yeah? Because my kids, if I try taking them out for a walk, I'm not getting a brisk walk. I go walk, but, like, they keep stopping. Then they run off. They get a little bit of a brisk walk there. Then they stop again. They pick up sticks. What was it? On my days, my other son, he don't want to walk for, he's annoying. Like, he's like, he walks like two steps, and he's like, yeah, makes you want to hold him. And then he'll walk for a couple more steps. And he's like, yeah, and he stops. And if you don't pick him up, he drops to the floor, and he'll just sit there. So, that's wrong. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. I feel your pain. Um, take them to your mum's house and be like, I'm going for a walk. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> I am I am very grateful that I've got Rashan, my partner, that he when I wanna just go for I can take that after my dinner. While, while, while the kids are eating their dinner, that's when I do it. They're eating their dinner. I'm like, you good? You good? You all got your food? Yeah, they're with their dad. I'm like, you you good? They're like, I'm walking. I'm like, I go for at least half an hour and walk. I get that break as well, especially when it's like screaming in the house. I get that ah! I'm like, okay, I'm going for my walk now. <laughs> love hamsters I, lo I love hamsters my hamster just was i don't know what happened it was so nice they had like some kind of argument they were fighting all the time and i was scared they were gonna kill each other so then i separated them uh and then one of one of them was happy with the other one just got i don't know what happened he got very aggressive All right, so I'm I'm definitely gonna go, guys, before I be myself, and that'll be very awkward. Uh, <laughs> what would you do? Uh, anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed my live, um, and get to know Louis Louise. This is what I do. I'm like my mum. I, I literally I can't end a conversation. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. Yeah. I'll see you guys when whenever. Uh, have a lovely weekend after tomorrow have a lovely friday end of the week uh, yeah